Thank you, everyone. Now, I have to tell you, advocacy is a word that incites the fear of uncontrolled chaos in the hearts of corporations everywhere. <laughs> Over the past 20 years, it's been fascinating to watch what's been going on around the world with regards to community engagement. What was once checkbook philanthropy and a nice cake when you bought a rental car has turned into something so professional that you have practitioners that have roles for hours and hours each day thinking about this stuff. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but what I do know is that we have a lot of corporate tools out there. And here's what this analogy is all about. Think of a company like a giant monkey wrench, and it is tightening the nut of charities around and around and around so much that we're actually starving not-for-profits everywhere of funding of resources. We are over-professionalizing volunteerism in a way in which leaves our peers hanging by the threads of their ideas into a box and what a company says, this is what we're all about and this is what we will be known to be about. And I don't know about you, but that actually scares me because I think it takes an individualism away from a community experience and what volunteerism is all about. It doesn't allow us anymore to share our voice in a social consciousness of business. But I think I've got a few options that I'm gonna to share too, but first, I present to you, uh, we'll call him Super James today, but I think we all know this person, uh, the organization and the culture of the fix it. You know, you go to a charity, you're gonna go in there and by 5 p.m. you're gonna have an answer and by God, you're gonna have a report and that report's gonna sit on a shelf and never be used. <laughs> so you're gonna, you're gonna sit there in your volunteer experience thinking you have all the answers. You've created new power dynamics. You've created a model where business people think that they have all the answers for charities. There's interesting associations with the millennial meal, I like to call it, where we're feeding that environment of empowerment so much that we're not actually taking a step back and thinking about the values that we want to share through our business and through two-way communication to understand why we're volunteering in the first place. And I have to say, we're going to come back to this, but it's an interesting association. But I return to a moment for advocacy, and I want to tell you a little story. I work with this amazing lady, and she loves cats. And I tell you, I'm not a cat guy. I don't like cats. I'm allergic to cats. I'm not, I'm not very good with cats. To everyone who loves cats, uh, I'll get there with you. Don't worry. But each morning around the coffee machine, she tells me how she's volunteering with pet adoptions every weekend. And she's telling me you know, the number of cats, the kind of cats, the cats' names. I mean, it's so touching. And she came to me the other day, and she said, you know, there's two kittens that weren't adopted, and I don't know what to do. So I brought them home with me. I'm going to take care of them for a few weeks, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to let them go. And I went back to my office, and I said, hmm, maybe I do like cats. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll admit this. But more importantly, I told three or four of my friends about the story, and I'm telling it to you today. And I found myself advocating for cats, which I don't even like. <laughs> but it raised an interesting idea around the consciousness of business. Businesses are made up of communities, communities are made up of people. And at the end of the day, I think where we've created a huge gap from A to B is that we hold businesses as these superpowers that need to frame out how we support communities. But don't we already know the answer? Don't we already know how we should be doing it within our own companies? So you know, I had this big idea. And I don't, <laughs> I don't usually have a lot of big ideas, but I thought that this would be a great place to share one. You know, I thought to myself that we need to turn the charity model on its head. Too many times we think of charity as a handout. You know, you're going to go in there and again back to the fix-it culture. You're going to go with all these solutions and all these answers. But rarely do we reframe things and think of them in a whole new way. So why don't we flip charity on its head? It's about a hand up. It's about understanding why we do things or why they're important or why we want to do them. And for charity, it's not so much focusing on you know, a short time frame and an end result. But maybe it's becoming comfortable, and especially for businesses, knowing that we don't need to know the answers. We don't necessarily want to measure the answers. We want to know that we're de developing responsible leaders that are actually going to create incredible changes. But we don't know what those changes are. And I think through the wisdom of not-for-profits everywhere and all around the world, it can inspire us to do that. It's no longer about charity as a handout or going to the corner store and giving money, although it may be and we need to have that role. But I think it's about reframing it all together. 
So I present to you adviteering. It's a new concept, I know. It's actually quite simple. Ad <laughs> advocacy and volunteering in one word. I know. <laughs> this was my big idea. <laughs> Deceptively simplistic. But I say it's a verb. It's acting upon a personal responsibility for community engagement. And it's not about, you know, standing up and be counted, but it's about having the courage to say something. It's about teaching, not telling. All of you are adviteers in this room, and you don't even know it. You're here to talk about innovation, or you're watching online, talking about how you can change the world. But you know it's not about one person. It's about the collective consciousness of ideas. And one must only look outside to the Occupy movements to see how effective this can be. But I return back to the fact that this kind of ideal does strike fear in the hearts of corporations everywhere because it can't be controlled. But is it a bad thing? And I, I, sit, I share with you today, I think there's three things that adviteers need to do. Here's my uh, treatise on adviteering, if you will. ROI, return on investment for business. Let's flip it on its head if you're an adviteer to think about results, outcomes, impacts, or inspiration. Think about things that aren't tangible, but things that you can think about and what they're going to be tomorrow. And I think within business, that's so important. Because when we talk about leadership development or volunteer development or engagement, isn't that what we're talking about altogether? There's a wise person in the audience today who shared some of those ideas with me, and if you're here, spoke just before me. I think secondly, and what's incredibly important, is that we have the courage to say something. Businesses do like to create marketing boxes for you, and you know, when you go out and volunteer with your, your peers, your team building, you're having fun. But are we actually listening? And I think that's a good question to ask, because you know, when we're going out to not-for-profits and charities, are we listening to what they actually need, or are we painting the same wall 25 times until we make it fall down, and then we have to rebuild it again? I think too many times that's happened. I also think people become short-sighted, and they don't listen to the wisdom of those around them. They become very insular as business people, you know, these smart cookies who know everything. But it's not that at all. I think we need to pay close attention. And the last thing I would say in being a true adviteer is looking at your networks and communication. And I go back to my, my colleague around the coffee machine in the morning sharing with me about uh, her experience with kittens. And I've now told this story over and over and over. And I'm not actually sure why I feel so touched, but I know I care. And it goes well beyond you know, the impact, the organization, the cause. Something about what somebody else said made me want to do something. It made me want to get up. It made me want to tell everybody about kittens. I don't know, it's probably a strange theme to be standing up here and talking about, but I feel really passionate about it now. And I feel like I can advocate through the good work that she's done and feel empowered to do that. But I think at the end of the day, when we bring it back to business, it's about reframing things. So I bring you back to uh, you know, Super James here. And I've reframed this photo. You know, we looked at it as this millennial before, you know, somebody who wanted to go in and fix the world. But if we zoom in on this photo, I think we can see something very different. I say we see a person who's inspired, who's acting, who wants to do something, and taking the time to think and reflect about the time it might take to get there. It's not about the perception on what we think when we first see something. I think it's about the courage it takes to take a step back and reflect upon what could be. I think that's what adviteering is all about as well. And again, I think it's what all of us are doing today. At the end of the day, and for businesses to change, it's about thinking, engaging, engaging passionately, and adviteering in a way that begins to change the social consciousness of the businesses where we operate. As communities, we have an obligation. It's not necessarily about you know, changing the world metric by metric in a business today, but we need only look outside in what's happened over the last few years to know that communities are powerful consciousness of what could be or what is yet to come. I know adviteering is the future, and I'd like to think that maybe I've been an adviteer here today, so thank you. Oh. Oh.